you, Jesus. We praise your name, oh Father. A very good morning to all of you. As we join in from home this morning, let's all worship the Lord from wherever we are. Join us in singing this song and lifting up His name. Just lift your heart, your hands and thank Him. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We're so grateful, oh, Father, for all you've done in our lives. Hallelujah. We praise your name. We lift your name on high. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Join us in singing this first chorus. Thank you, Lord. As we continue to thank the Lord.
thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy, Father. Yes, you are worthy, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Because you are the worthy one, oh, Father. Yes, you are the worthy one. Bless your name, oh God. Bless your name, oh Father. Thank you, Jesus.
into your hands. In your name I pray. Amen. Good morning church. Hope you all had a wonderful weekend. So it's always a privilege to worship the Lord and to hear the word of God. Since there are so many people in this world dying every moment not having this privilege to worship the Lord and to hear the word of God spoken to him. Therefore, we can call ourselves a chosen group of people having this privilege. Like in the olden days, how people of Israel were chosen to worship the Lord and to hear from him. Therefore, we should also take the maximum opportunity that we have got from our God to be called his, on his own a chosen group of people set apart for him so before we move forward shall we all turn the Bible to Malachi 3.10 it says bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house test me in this says the Lord Almighty and, I, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be not enough room in your store. So this is a promise that God has made to us. He will bless us, honor us for bringing the full tithe into the storehouse. Actually, by bringing the full tithe into the storehouse, we acknowledge that it was God who provided us financially and that we honor his commandments. The end result is that God is going to throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be not enough room to store it. So shall we all get together and join in this prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you, Lord. Thank you for your mercy and grace, Lord. Thank you for opening the floodgates of heaven and blessing us financially, Lord. In honoring your commandment and acknowledging it was you who provided us, Lord. We bring back one-tenth of our earning, Lord. Knowing that the balance is blessed by you, Lord Jesus. Lord, again we thank you and praise you for blessing us and opening the floodgates of heaven and blessing us, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. So, getting back to the message. If you look closer at the scripture, you will realize that God is frequently looking for a man of certain type. Not a group, but an individual. So when God discovers a man who conforms to his spiritual requirement, who is willing to pay the full price of his discipleship, God is going to use, his, use him to the limit, despite his apparent shortcomings. So today I want to ask from you, what is your heart's desire? What is your heart's desire? Is it to be called a man or a woman after God's own heart? So, shall we look at Acts 13, 22? It says, After removing Saul, he made David their king. God testified concerning him. I have found 
David son of Jesse a man after my own heart he will do everything i want him to do so this is a confirmation a testimony by god so isn't it what we all want to hear from god a man or a woman after god's own heart there are so many things that we can learn from the life of king david he is one of the greatest stories of rags to riches in the bible since he started as a shepherd boy and ended up as a king he became a great warrior and consolidated the tiny nation of israel into a powerful kingdom that ruled a large part of the middle east during the 10th century bc but out of all the accomplishments king david's greatest accomplishment is how god has addressed him that is i have found david son of jesse a man after my own heart he will do everything i want him to do but one could find this statement to be confusing that is god is declaring his approval of king david's heart and life since we all know about king david king david was a warrior who shed so much blood and he is also deprived of his desire to build the house of god as said in first chronicles 22:8 but this word of the lord came to me you have shed much blood and have fought many wars you are not to build a house for my name because you have shed much blood and on earth in my sight so he couldn't build the house house of god for the lord though he desired because he shed so much blood on earth also king david committed adultery with a woman named bathsheba as said in second samuel 11:4 further when king david found out bathsheba was pregnant he orders bathsheba's husband who was a soldier in his army to be sent to the forward position in the battle where he was killed that is said in second samuel 11:5 to 17 King David had multiple wives as said in 2 Samuel 3:1 and 5. King David was a negligent father. His f- family was plagued with many issues and strifes. It is said in 2 Samuel 13:15 and 18:33. And also King David contrary to Lord's commandment pridefully numbered his troops causing the death of over 70000 soldiers this is said in 2 Samuel 24 10 and 15 but yet on top of all these issues that David had God states that I have found David son of Jesse a man after my own heart he will do everything i want him to do so you might think how can king david be called this way by god with the background we just saw now however whatever we need to keep in mind is that king david was also human 
who had many weaknesses like you and me. You can call he's a man with the feet of clay. But above everything, King David sought to be righteous and his heart's desire was to do God's will. In fact, this is the type of person that God was looking for as said in Jeremiah 5 1. Go up and down the streets of Jerusalem. Look around and consider, searching through her squares. If you can find but one person who, dele- uh, who deals honestly and seeks the truth, I will forgive this city. So, what we have to keep in mind is that God doesn't expect perfection as we can clearly see from the life of King David. After all that he has done, God was still looking at King David's heart and says that he was a man after his own heart, a man who did all what God wanted according to his will and purpose. So that is the calling that he had in life. Because King David didn't have to uh, rely on his strengths, but he had to only rely on God's grace upon his life, which is called unmerited favor. By this action, King David didn't deserve God's blessing. Because whatever he did, he didn't deserve God's blessing. But because of God's grace, his unmerited favor upon him, God blessed him. Because King David's heart had the right desire, a longing to follow and please God. So, This brings out an important question, one that can bring a lot of meaning, purpose and fulfillment in your life. That is, do you want to be a man or a woman after God's own heart? Is your heart's desire to follow God after God's will and purpose in your life? In fact, because of our tendency, We take three steps forward, two steps backwards in our spiritual walk of life. You might think trying to be a man after God's own heart is not an achievable desire or goal. Also even because of your past actions, the sins that you may have committed, you are not eligible to be called this way. But what you need to keep in mind is that God is looking the same way God looked at David's heart. He is going to look at your heart. And that's where God is going to look in your life. Because what is important is to count on the grace of God. The grace of God that enables us and strengthens us at all times. Do you ever wonder how God would have called King David as an adulterer or a murderer? But God decided to call him as a man after his own heart. What a wonderful thing about this. Because in the Bible, most of the heroes that we come across are not perfect. They are imperfect people like you and me. Many times people are labeled by wrongdoings they commit. But God doesn't see as the man sees. Remember, as said in Proverbs 28:14. Water reflects a face, so a man's heart 
reflects a man. Also in Luke 6.45 For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. We can understand so much of a person's character through his words and there are tons of it in the very own book that King David had wrote, the book of Psalms. Now we will look at five simple reasons. There can be so many reasons why David was called after God's own heart. But these are some simple reasons that we are going to look at. Five. First reason, the Lord was his rock and fortress. It is easy to feel afraid when enemies surround us. We may never know when the next attack would be because we are fighting a battle with an enemy which we, we cannot see. However, David did not fail to take courage in the Lord for God was his rock and refuge. It is said in Psalms 18, 2, Psalms 31, 2 and 3, David regarded Lord as his rock and his fortress. When the Lord rescued him from the hand of Saul and other enemies. So we, we know that King David lived a blood filled life. His enemies surrounded him ready to attack him day and night and the only stronghold that he depended on was God. Because from the very small days when he was a shepherd, he had so many things to confront. There would be animals coming to attack his sheep, which from, from those animals he had to save his sheep. Despite all this, David conquered because God was his, on his side. So the first reason is the Lord was his rock and fortress. The second reason is the Lord was his shepherd. He considered God to be his shepherd because as we all know he King David knew who was, what are the activities of a shepherd is. When he wrote Psalms 23, he used his experience and he used it towards God, to worship God and to say that I am relying on, relying on you, my God, the same way my sheep relied on me. So if you look closer into Psalms 23, it says, fills our needs. He pro God is the provider. He leads us into righteousness. There's nothing to fear when Lord is on our side. He is leading us. He comforts us and gives us security. He protects us, He anoints us and altogether He blesses us. This is a summary of Psalms 23. So David was a man after God's own heart because his shepherd was God. And the third reason why God would call in such a way is David made the Lord to be the light and salvation of his life. One thing that was constant in David's prayer was God. Though he was pressed with many trials and challenges around him, he understood that, that the Lord would never leave him 
and that God will always be with him to save him. As said in Psalms 27:1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? David was a man after God's own heart because he understood well that there is no other light and savior than Lord. And the fourth reason is the Lord was his strength and shield. Unlike Saul, David trusted not in his armor or on his soldiers, but his dependence, his total dependence was on God. This taught many difficult it may be difficult for us to fathom but given the situation how david walked the path of the bloodshed he walked he fought so many battles but he was protected because his strength and his shield was god as said in psalms 28:7 The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trust in him. And he helps me. My heart, my heart leaps for joy. And with my song I praise him. The Lord was his strength. He was his shield. We understand here that David was a man after God's own heart because he is qualified. but because of god's grace because he always relied on god we can remember how he went to battle with goliath just with few rocks that is the faith that is the confidence that he has on god and the fifth reason the lord was his trust David lived a life of uncertainty yet his reign started the golden years of Israel the credit of course is due to the lord who blessed his children he in fact David blessed his children who was lovingly obeyed and trusted in the commandments As said in Psalms 25, I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame. Neither let my enemies triumph over me. Also in Psalms 27 it said, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord, our God. So again, here David attested his faith. He was able to transfer his faith to the Lord. to his son Solomon who also proclaimed in Proverbs 16:20 blessed is the man who trust in the lord so that is what he did he not only had faith trust in the lord he was able to transfer it to his children david anchors his trust not on earthly power but the creator the ruler of all things the universe the almighty god yes you see david wasn't a man after his own heart because of his own qualification but because of the lords he indeed just like any one of us is a sinner God continually reminded him and as a result he became he became repentant of his sins we could enlist more descriptions of why david is rightful to be called a man after god's own heart there are so many reasons however david's experience was constant reminder that there's nothing that we can do be worthy in God's sight 
God alone has the power to draw us near to his heart and may that be the utmost prayer of everyone so my earnest appeal today is do you wish to be called do you wish to be a man or woman after god's own heart the good news is god is willing is able just rest upon him rely on him rely upon him seek him always the same way we find how king david if we recap the reasons he made lord his rock and fortress the lord was his shepherd he claimed always he claimed that lord was his light and salvation and he claimed that his strength and shield is lord and finally and there are so many other reasons lord was his trust he depended on him so if we can do like the same way and have a repentful heart like that of king david we too can be called a man or a woman after god's heart that should be our utmost desire in our life that testimony from god this is my son my daughter whom i am well pleased that was said by God to Lord Jesus Christ the same way we should have that desire to fulfill what we have been called to do in our lives it's you might think it's difficult but i'm telling you today we can step take one step at a time take one step at a time and move forward take look at keep reminding of these reasons there are so many other reasons that we can think of why king david was called this way but keep reminding you this reasons that's all what god wants from us May God bless you and I wish you all a wonderful week ahead.